We always hear stories about racial bias in the housing market, redlining, all these things. Uh, but people don't always believe it. Well, there's one particular black uh, family in their suburban home. They are selling, at least they're trying to refinance it. And uh, they're showing some significant racial bias when it comes to the housing market, especially when it comes to appraisals. So uh, let's jump right into it because the difference in what they uh, got at first versus what they then saw later when they changed a couple of uh, Minor details was about $300,000. Let's get some wow. details of how that happened. Last summer, Nathan Conley and his wife, Shani Mott, welcomed an appraiser into their house in Baltimore, hoping to take advantage of historically low interest rates and refinance their mortgage. They believed that their house, improved with a new 5,000 tankless water heater and $35,000 in other renovations, was worth much more than the $450,000 that they paid for it in 2017. Four hundred fifty thousand dollars in 2017. Excuse me. Home prices have been on the rise nationwide since the pandemic, so they were thinking, hey, especially in Baltimore, by the way, they've gone up more than 40 percent in the past five years. So of course, Dr. Conley and Dr. Mott, they live in this majority white North Baltimore neighborhood of Homeland, is where their home is, and and it's known for its strong public schools. This is perfect for making sure that you have more when it comes to your home. So they tried it. The couple applied to refinance their mortgage with Loan Depot in May of 21. The lender approved a loan at a rate of 2.25% and told the couple that their home was likely now worth $550,000 or more. To conduct the appraisal, Loan Depot hired 2020 Valuations, which is a Maryland appraisal company, as a subcontractor. In 20, uh, the 2020 Valuations put the home's value at $472,000. And in turn, Loan Depot denied the couple their refinancing of their loan. So as I said, 472,000, which is only 22,000 more than the original pay back in 2017 in a market where everything is exploding as we know. Dr. Conley said that he knew why. He, his wife and three children aged 15, 12 and nine are black. He's a professor of history at Johns Hopkins University. Dr. Conley is an expert on redlining and the legacy of white supremacy in American cities. And much of his research focuses on the role of race in the housing market. They chose the wrong guy. <laughs> Man, did they run into the wrong dude. I mean, just they do it enough times, eventually you're gonna get the wrong one. So a little bit more on this. Maybe the inspector didn't even notice their race, who knows? Let's look at what was in the house. Dr. Conley and Mott um, and their three children were home during the appraiser's visit. And their house was so filled with family photos, children's drawings of figures with dark skin, a poster of the film Black Panther, and literature by black authors, because Dr. Mott lectures on literature and Africana studies. So when they tried to challenge the appraisal's number there, um, they uh, stopped returning their calls. Like, no, we don't wanna hear from you. Yes, you got what you were supposed to get. That's just what it is. Hmm. Several months later, they applied for a new loan with a different mortgage company and they tried something different. This time they underwent a whitewashing experiment is what they called it, removing indications of blackness from their home and replacing them with signifiers that a white family might live there instead. They cleared their bookshelves of works by black authors. They asked their white friends to share family photos and placed those in picture frames around the house on their walls. And they even hung art that was bought at Ikea that showed white folks, <laughs> is what they said. We had, to do, we had to have a conversation uh, with our kids about why we're pulling down all their drawings. It's very humiliating to strip your house uh, of your own home. On the day of the second appraisal, they left their home and had the white colleague answer the door. The second appraiser provided the $750,000 estimate. Now before it was 472 from the original 450, and now it's 750 with different artwork, books, and a person answering the door. Okay, uh, good news for, for white folks, because you're gonna need to be rented out uh, soon. A new line of work for you guys, because if I'm selling <laughs> my house, I'm not gonna have me, you know, a brown Turkish Middle Eastern guy and my Asian <laughs> wife. I'm gonna rent some white folks, and all of a sudden, we're gonna get much bigger prices. So congrats, white folks. No, seriously, guys, I mean, look, the difference isn't subtle. It's not like, hey, 472, oh, they went to 482. Well, hey, look, that's $10,000 difference, man. Oh my God, 500, 550. Oh, that's, that's over 60, $70,000 difference, that would be amazing. No, 750, 750, same exact house. 
There's no way to dispute that. And look, you can say it's just one case, but there's meta studies on this. So it's not like, I mean, the, the reason we kept laughing about it, they ran into the wrong dude is because he's seen those studies, he teaches those studies. It happens on a macro level, it happens all across the country, and it's documented, it's proven. This just happens to be a spectacular case of it, where you can actually at least identify with it. I mean, if you have any bone in your body that allows you to empathize with other human beings, in other words, if you're not a right winger. Okay, uh, then you could say, "Oh yeah, well, man, I see that, man. I know my house. Oh yeah, what if I did that?" And then we brought in the the, the blonde folks, and then all of a sudden it was worth, well, you know, three hundred thousand dollars more. You could relate to it, and that's what happens, and it just happened to them. And there's been more accusations against this company, so it's not just isolated. This is just the perfect proof example that they have, <laughs> and it's just so not surprising, but so 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 sad and so. So just disheartening to see that redlining apparently is still alive and well and not even in full neighborhoods now. Even in a white neighborhood, if there's a black owned house, they're drawing a red line around just individual houses now. This is where we're at. Yeah, no, that's a good point because in the old school redlining was black folks weren't allowed to own homes, get mortgages, etc. in certain neighborhoods and they were shepherded into other neighbor into specific places and then the property values were driven down, right? Now, you're in the best neighborhoods, did you on a red line right around your house like Ben <laughs> said? And go we're red lining anyway. It reminds me of that that classic old Chris Rock bit. I don't know if it's classic, but it's a good bit. He was telling the story about the neighborhood that he lives in. I think it was like in Maryland or so. I don't remember exactly where, maybe Pennsylvania, but he said and here's what shows the difference in this country between wealth and just people that make it to a certain level of success in the black community versus the white community. He said his neighborhood, he has like Mary J. Blige lives on that street, Will Smith, pre-slap, Chris Rock. It was like three or four of the most successful black people in the world. Like in, in pop culture history had to get to that level of success to live on that block and their white neighbor, just a dentist. Yep. I remember that. You remember, I remember that, that story? Just a dentist. Yeah. And by the way, if you, this comes to like the 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 opportunity when it comes to America, right? The land of opportunity where you have upward mobility. If you work hard, put your head down, and do the right things, become professionals like these two doctors are, and then really you'll you'll take off. Own property, have a piece of our country, right? They were doing that. And if you believe in all that stuff, if you like the rest of the world to be like, we're the shining example on the hill. This is a land of opportunity that we bring the brightest and the best. You should be the most upset about this. They're tarnishing this dream that you say exists in our country. This is where the lie comes in. Do you want it to be real or do you just want to say it is? And then when it's not, you should be the one defending these folks. You should be the one that's talking about how they got screwed over and I can't believe in my country, in my America, where opportunities for everyone and we're past that whole racism thing. There's no such thing as this racial bias in housing and redlining. You would like for it to actually be true, wouldn't you? That's the people that should be that most outraged about this. It's, it's just insane that we can't, America has amazing PR. The fact that we still are considered the greatest country in the world by many, the fact that we still, despite this incredibly tarnished history and reputation constantly, it's just so frightening that we can't fix these things with more urgency. I mean, why are we a shining city on a hill? Because that's the one hill that's not redlined with black people around it. I mean, what does it take to finally create equality? We need to start punishing people, punishing companies, punishing organizations that prove any sort of racial bias. It's like a one strike warning and then you're out. Like, all right, that's your one. And you do it again, you're out. You're gonna lose your accreditation with the Better Business Bureau. You're gonna lose, the Chamber of Commerce is gonna kick you out. We cannot keep saying, "Oh, well, we gotta fix this slowly. No, we gotta fix it decades ago. Yeah, by the way, Tucker Carlson just did a segment on race hate, saying that anything that's looking to address discrimination <laughs> is race hate, right? <laughs> so he would take what Ben said and go, "Oh, look at this, they're looking to punish companies just based on discrimination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I mean, Crazy. so do you want our houses to be worth $300,000 less because of, are we just supposed to take that? Yes. And are we supposed to say, "Oh, thank you, sir, may I have another? And Jared's right, yeah. Tucker thinks oh, absolutely. Our it, our house is supposed to be unfairly worth nearly twice as much as your house. And if you're trying to fix it, that's race hate to me. And so that's where we are today. The kings of false equivalency.